Okay, so before you start drafting, um, there's a few things um, I want to go over uh, before we start working with objects uh, that you're going to need to know about about how, um, how drafting and moving around in the drawing area works. Um, admittedly, um, I'm making this video after I've already recorded a bunch of the uh, beginner series videos, um, and I realized that I forgot to go over um, uh, like selection, selection windows, and grips um, because they're they're kind of so fundamental um, that I overlooked them. I forget they're just kind of integral and part of part of uh, CAD. So you're gonna see a lot of well, you're gonna see a few commands that I will not have gone over yet, but I might go uh, in um, a later lesson. So I'm gonna draw um, a line. We'll start with a basic line. And what I want to show uh, to start off with is how you select things and how you click things and whatever in AutoCAD. So um, in in AutoCAD, when you're doing any kind of selection, um, if you do not have an object selected, if you don't have anything, like you can select an object by clicking it, right? And it highlights it and brings up these little blue dots called grips. Um, if you're at a company and these look different, it's possible to change the color scheme. You can change the color of the grips. Your line may also uh, highlight differently. Uh, this one, it highlights with kind of a blue tint to it. Um, it's You can change it to where it's a dash uh, highlight. When you're highlighting something, it turns dash instead, so it will change. You'll also notice that you can have what's called a selection window, and you, when you, you click a point, you don't have to hold. You just click one point and release the mouse, and it'll start to kind of float around as you move your mouse. You'll see it. You'll see a blue selection window when you move your mouse to the right, and a green selection window with a dash border as you move your mouse to the left. These do have uh, different functionalities, and it's important to understand what they are. And it's you can see that when uh, with this uh, this line, you'll see how it highlights. Right as I put my mouse over it, you'll see that it highlights. This is actually one of the um, settings and the options. It's like selection highlighting. It can help you identify when you have like a few different uh, objects, um, which one you are uh, actually hovering, which one you're about to select. So selection highlighting is nice. Okay. When you're making a selection window, if you have uh, a blue selection window, so you click and then you move your mouse, you let go, uh, move your mouse to the right, um, you can see that the the line does not highlight until I actually have it inside the window entirely. This is a standard selection window, um, and it will only select objects inside the blue selection window. Green, on the other hand, will highlight an object as soon as it crosses. It's called a crossing uh, window, crossing selection window. Um, what it does is it allows you to select objects just by by um, selecting a portion of the object. You can also put it entirely inside, but if you just happen to have a portion of it, it will select. So I'll put like a circle here, and you'll see that um, if I uh, if I select, I can. I can get this circle inside highlighted because it's inside my selection window, but my line is not selected. This is a nice way to filter out objects outside of your selection if you don't want to, just don't don't have it entirely inside. However, if I go the opposite way, the moment that my crossing window uh, crosses paths with these objects, they will highlight, allowing them to be selected. This kind of stuff works mid-command, so if I'm doing a move command, um, just by crossing over the object, I can select it. Conversely, if I'm just if I'm going the opposite direction with my blue standard selection window, I have to make sure that it's entirely within uh, my selection window in order for it to be part of that. If you do find yourself accidentally holding down, uh, you'll notice you'll see stuff like this, and it's kind of freaking you out. What this is is a freeform selection window. Um, not all versions of CAD have this. If you're working on an older version of CAD, it may not have this. Uh, it may be that when you hold it down, it still does a regular selection window. But you can do this free form. This kind of allows you to um, make like, like a lasso like you would in Photoshop or something. It's just a free form uh, or free hand selection window. This is nice for maybe getting into some tight areas if you have to. Um, and, you know, like doing something like that or whatever. You know what I mean? You can do this free form thing. This may happen to you early on as you get used to... 
uh, clicking, releasing, and clicking again. It's uh, it's very common in most programs, really, to hold something down as you're dragging it. You do not do that in AutoCAD, although you can. Um, it's possible for you to select an object and just uh, drag that object. I would not recommend it. You can see it actually runs a little slower. It kind of drags as opposed to using like a move command, which is a lot smoother. This will kind of have like a laggy frame rate and it's way less precise. Maybe if you want to quickly get something out of the way, you can click and drag that object. Now, you might find yourself clicking and clicking on a grip. Grips allow additional functionality for objects depending on the grip that you select. Let's take a basic line, for example. You select the center grip and it will move that line from the center point. Clicking the grip will highlight it to a red color, letting you know which grip you have selected. And in this case, I'm doing, I'm doing a move grip from the center and moving this line to a different location, moving from the center. Um, again, you still probably want to use your move command. It offers more functionality. So don't get in the habit of using moving things um, with the grip. Uh, unless you know what you're doing. Same thing applies to the circles per se. If you're going uh, from the center at your move grip. Um, on a line, if you're clicking your end grips, these are your stretch and length and grips, grip, grips, grips. So if you click the end grip, you can uh, just drag it around and stretch it to a different location. If you hover over, you get additional options. Well, one additional option, you can either stretch or you can lengthen, which basically puts it in that same direction whether uh, no matter what angle it's at so this is super handy for um, at any point in time um, and uh, yeah you can just stretch it like that stretching via a distance at an angle something that's a little bit different I can get into that later on but essentially you want to do something differently aligning your UCS with the object is one way to do that but I'll get into that later. Um, so with us, and let's see, do you get one in the center? You really don't, because there's only one option for the center, and that is to move it. Here, um, you're also not really going to get an, an additional options, because the only other option you have, only two things you can do is move this with the center grip, or grab this grip on one of the quadrants, and just stretch it to make the radius of the circle bigger. So, um, lots of different objects have grips, rectangles have grips, um, you can drag one side of it, turn the ortho on, and then you can lock it into one plane. Um, these are considered polylines, so they do have additional things like adding vertexes. Um, I, I have to go into polylines later. Um, so grips give you additional functionality, and it's important to understand what you can do with them and that you can you know, drag them around and things like that because you, you're going to find yourself using them from time to time. So... That's your basic selection and grips. Um, you got your standard window, your which you have to have objects inside of to select. Your crossing window, which you only have to cross with them. Uh, you got your freeform. You have your um, freeform crossing window, just by crossing over. You also have one more, which usually is accessible inside of a command. Let's say I'm doing a move command. It doesn't show it here, but you can uh, type in. Actually, there's two other types. There's a a fence line and what's called a crossing polygon. Um, you may want to write these down and keep them in mind for future because you may not use them right away, but they can come in handy down the road. A fence line allows you to, you type in F mid command before you even select your objects. When it, when it's asking you to select your ob objects, you type in F and it allows you to uh, make a fence line. A fence line is, you see this dash line means you're, as soon as you cross something, it becomes selected. What you can do is click points and it allows you to select all those objects as long as that line is crossing through it. Really, really, really handy um, when you're in like tight areas. Say I've got, you know, a line here and a line like that and, you know, whatever else. Um, and I want to do a move command. Maybe I just want to move the, the, I don't know, something like this. Uh, move fence line and do like this and maybe come around here you know, and something like that, and I can move just those objects. So that's that's one thing. It's a fence line. Another thing you can do is called a, a crossing polygon window, um, and that is, say I do that same move command, and I type in CP for crossing polygon, what I can do is um, make a polygon window, and this is a crossing window, so if it, if it as long as it touches an object, um, it will highlight it. Let's say I don't want to do that. I can just hit undo. There's the option there, undo, and it'll take that selection back, and I can just grab that, 
and there's my three objects. So great way to maneuver around um, objects by using a crossing polygon window. So those are your um, selection options or selection types and your grips. There are options that control that. Um, if you feel like exploring, you can get into those by going to the options menu by typing an OP or going to tools and options, going to selection and um, it's all here. Um, selection modes, um, your selection effect color, which was that highlighting I was showing you earlier. Um, your selection preview, like when you put your mouse over something, you can see different colors here and things of that nature. You can edit all this. I don't want to get into this right now. It's a lot of settings, but you can you can always open this up and hit, uh, get to the help file, and I'll go through each one of these things. Uh, at some point, I'll do a video about options and all that, but for now, you use the help file if you want to change the way things look. So, and there you go.